Hello and welcome. I'm Professor Lucas, and today we'll be discussing how we learn and remember, with a focus on schema theory. This information is adapted from Chapter 5, Understanding and Remembering, in the textbook I wrote, College Composition and Reading, Information and Strategies. So, why is schema theory important? What are the benefits of our minds working this way? There are many. First and most importantly, schemata organize and sort through your received experiences and knowledge in a manageable way by relating ideas together so they can be searched in an orderly fashion. Just like a library or a grocery store uses organization and categories so you can quickly find any particular item in a short time, your brain has a system as well. But this system can be quite useful in many other ways than simply searching out information. Schemata also help us learn information faster and remember it better by providing the underlying form or blueprint so that it doesn't have to be relearned each time. You draw on the existing foundation knowledge. A schema provides a slot that each piece of information fits into so you can remember via connections rather than by memorizing every detail, which is nearly impossible to achieve. For instance, there's a slot for the main entree in a fine dining restaurant schema and a slot for the cake in a birthday party schema. A study was done that showed how schema can help memory. People were given a list of foods and people and were asked to memorize which food item went with which person. One group was told that it was each person's grocery list, the other that it was a list of what each person had at a restaurant dinner. Guess which group did better? The restaurant group because there are fewer items that fit into the slots. If you're eating at a restaurant, you know you'll have a main course, perhaps an appetizer and a dessert. On the other hand, a grocery list could have almost anything on it. Information that fits the slot is readily learned with little mental effort. Scientists know this, which is why the vast amount of knowledge in any scientific field is subdivided into different classifications. Schemata also allow us to communicate from a shared frame of reference without having to specify every single detail. We can infer or fill in the blanks of what is not said. For example, if I said to my friend that I went to a restaurant and got steak and mashed potatoes, my friend would automatically know what basic style of restaurant and that I went through the series of events included in a typical restaurant visit that we looked at in the introduction mini lecture. They also direct our attention letting us know what is more or less important, helping you recognize and separate trivial information from the important, unique stuff. This means you can pay less attention to trivia, saving time, and having more brain power for remembering the important stuff. Since no one can notice every detail or remember an entire text, skilled readers are able to pay more attention to important details and less to others, making reader faster and more efficient. Since a schema includes a criteria of importance, what's important and what's not, it enables the reader to produce summaries that include significant information and leave out trivial information. We saw this in action with the burglar and homebuyer study on page 111 of the textbook in the Evidence from Studies section. A schema also allows for inferential elaboration. No text is completely explicit and there's always some information which is implicit or unstated. Inferential elaboration allows us to go beyond what is literally stated in the text and helps you make guesses about things that didn't get written down, reading much more than what a sentence explicitly says. It also allows inferential reconstruction. When there's a gap in your memory, you can fill it in with reasonable guesses based on your understanding of the situation and the usual or stereotypical answer for what you don't remember. Now, the easiest and clearest way to see schema's effects is when they break down, which helps us see how it goes when they work smoothly. You were able to see demonstrated how our schemata shape our memory, understanding, and perception in the study discussed in the textbook. In the study, people from India and people from America read two letters, one about an American wedding and one about a wedding in India. There are substantial differences in the two cultures with regards to weddings, and we can see the various functions in action in the results of this study. Again, as we just went over, 
A schema helps us to organize and store information, so we have an easier time learning and remembering it. A schema identifies which details are more or less important and their significance, and it helps us to infer and reconstruct information. So, in the study, each group spent less time reading what was for them the native passage. This shows how having a template or being able to fill in the blanks or slots can enhance your reading speed. The familiarity with the basic event being discussed in the letter allowed the participants to take in the information more quickly. Then, when asked to recall everything they could about each letter, the participants from India remembered more of the Indian text and Americans remembered more of the American one, showing how having a schema for an event can help us remember it better. When asked to recall the letter about the other culture's wedding, not only did each group recall fewer details and have more errors in what they did recall, but they also showed more culturally inappropriate distortions. For example, one passage in the American letter read, Did you know that Pam was going to wear her grandmother's wedding dress? That gave her something old and was borrowed, too. It was made of lace over satin with very large puff sleeves and looked absolutely charming on her. One participant from India said this, She was looking all right, except the dress was too old and out of fashion. This person from India inferred that the dress was out of fashion because Indians attach importance to displays of social status at weddings, like wearing an up-to-date and fashionable sari. Therefore, the schema that rated the importance of details did not match the situation, creating a misunderstanding. In another part of the study, different groups of Indians and Americans read the letters and rated the details by importance. The Americans rated the information about ritual and ceremony more important in both, and the Indians rated the details about financial and social status as more important in both, since those are the more important aspects of a wedding in each culture. American weddings emphasize tradition and the ceremony, and Indian weddings are primarily occasions to display wealth and social status. Now that you are familiar with schema theory, it's time to finish up by discussing how we can use that knowledge. There are basically two ways to use schema knowledge as a writer, helping your readers to activate the correct schema and by helping them to construct a new one. When you're discussing something that your reader already knows about, there are several methods you can use to help them activate a schema that already exists. And when you're teaching them something new, many similar techniques can help them to build a new one from their existing knowledge. Let's take a look at a few. Education researchers Suzanne Donovan and John Bransford said, quote, The reason experts remember more is that what novices see as separate pieces of information, experts see as organized sets of ideas, end quote. Basically, whether you are helping readers activate existing schema or build new ones, you want to help them recognize the connections and have an overall idea of the gist and structure. Therefore, one method to help your readers is to include an introduction to the material. This helps your readers build or activate that foundation they need to be able to follow what you're saying. This is why so often essays begin with something that people already know or are familiar with before going on to new ideas. And it is also why I started this book with a review of information about college-level reading and writing, and essays in particular. Another method is to connect material to experiences that your reader can relate to or use an example that resonates with them. You want to remind them of something they've experienced that's relevant to what you're talking about. For instance, if you're trying to argue that school uniforms should be implemented, you might remind readers of getting made fun of for something they were wearing as a kid. You want to explain new things in terms of things readers already understand, such as how people explaining how electricity behaves often liken it to how water acts in a stream bed. Most people don't know much about electricity, but they're generally familiar with how water acts in a river. As another example, if a British person is explaining the game of rugby to an American, it would be helpful to compare it to the similar game of football, which the American will be familiar with, so that instead of memorizing everything, they can create a new sequence based off of similarities and differences to a concept for which they already have a schema. In this way, making connections to things the readers already know or understand can strengthen your writing immeasurably. 
Emphasizing connections within material is also important. Using transition words and explicitly connecting back can be helpful techniques. For example, in the next chapter on reading, I'll be connecting back by pointing out how various reading strategies are built on schema activation methods. For instance, pre-reading is a way of activating your schema, getting it ready to be built upon. One of the most important things that you can do is to explain the relevance and relationships of details that are included. For example, in one study that was done, second graders read a textbook that gave lots of details about how Native Americans lived, including what their houses were made out of and how they were shaped, but didn't explain why. Another group read a textbook that explained how the house's type and materials related to the environment, such as pointing out that houses in the warm areas helped keep things cool, and that people who were nomadic had houses that were easily portable. The group that read the textbook where the connections were explained remembered the material better. Finally, if you're creating a new schema for something, include information to categorize details. For example, if you're explaining the steps that need to be taken for a process, you might section the entire process into larger chunks like gathering materials and gaining permissions to group the steps together. Providing a summary or outline can also help your readers create a blueprint or schema of the new idea. They need information about how the details are grouped together to gain an overall understanding. This was the final mini lecture on schema and how we learn. Check out the next video for how we can use this information to read and study more effectively. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that this overview was helpful and illuminating. Please don't hesitate to contact me with any question you may have about the material. I am always happy to help.